So there was a lot of people who reached out to me saying how awesome it was that Peter McKinnon shouted me out and how they were so happy for me. And there was a lot of nuances that happened during this Peter McKinnon effect. I wanted to talk to you about those, but also there was a thing that I didn't really have in place. And hopefully by the end of this video, you might set up your creative flow so that if anybody ever did shout you out for any reason, that you would be set up for success instead of what happened to me. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard of the Peter McKinnon effect, which is basically if Peter McKinnon shouts out or mentions a product or person and just completely creates the career for them. All of the previous hard work and hours and everything they've done up until that point really just starts to bloom. Now, before I get into the rude awakening from this whole thing is what happened actually to me. Uh, basically, I got thousands of followers on Instagram and that's really cool, but it's just followers. And you know, that doesn't really mean much. But what was cool was people that I did follow and I admire of other creators start to reaching out and I got their follows like particular people I got to talk to them and find out, oh, they're also really awesome people. These two people, in particular, are really cool. Now, validation is pretty awesome, of course, but what the coolest part about that is that, unlike Instagram, subscribers on YouTube are more personal, and you get to get those. Those are people that are now in your life and know a lot more about you, and and get to know you as a person. I don't feel like people get to know each other through Instagram, not like they used to. That's a big deal for me, that validation, connection, YouTube subscribers. Now, I bet you're wondering, what did I do when this shout out happened? And I gotta say, nothing. I was busy with a bunch of people. I was at the Beard Brand mansion party with a whole bunch of other YouTubers. I thought, you know, I'm doing something here with a lot of people that I respect, and I can't just change all that, even though the opportunity was so massive, so grand, and I don't regret what I did. For me, an opportunity that happens once in a lifetime is something that you want to capitalize on. And I realized that I wasn't fully set up for that. My work wasn't clear. I didn't really have a particular niche that I believe uh, was easily understood. I didn't know what to do. And that's the big lesson here is I didn't set myself up for success. And instead of grasping at straws, trying to make something work at this opportunity, I decided to realize that, hey, I lost a long time ago. And right now, this just was more of a, a metaphorical slap in the face from myself. It's being, hey, I didn't get my shit together. And here we are. But what I really wanted to do was keep being present with the people that I was with. I was with all these amazing people. I just stuck with them. I was just paying attention to them and appreciating them at that moment. If you think about it this way, it's like you don't go on a date and have your nose and your phone talking to other people. It's just rude. And, you know, people are too ADD about their life and they're right in front of loved ones. And then they talk to somebody else who they think is cool as well. And then when they're in front of them, they're talking to somebody else. Uh, they're just not as present in the world. And this is something that I've been really working on lately and it's because of this lack of presence in the past that I couldn't focus on myself and what my channel was about or my work. So once this slap in the face from my past self happened, I really kind of buckled down and tried to figure out what I'm all about. Now, I think it's because of this reason, this character flaw, as you may say, that I think Peter likes me and that we're friends, is because I treat him like a person. I don't treat him as all capitals Peter McKinnon. And I think he admires the fact that I respect him as a person in my life, not an online identity. 
what else is Pete like? He's really cool. Like, he's actually a cool dude. You all know it. He does anything, and it sets a trend. People see it. They think, oh, he's, he's this really cool dude. But then in real life, yeah, he is. He's actually pretty cool. Now, aside from being a wizard in creativity, just generally nice guy, he's, he's not cocky and he's just really friendly. And it's interesting to see that because you'd think somebody of that status could be arrogant. And I've learned of a lot of YouTubers that are and they're egotistical. Pete is not and he, and he shouts out a lot of people. He's just an awesome dude and likes to boost up others. He's extremely giving. It's weird to see somebody that generous. It's like he's a superhero, but the last thing about him is that he's human. And you see him have debate over certain ideas and like you kind of notice that there was something changed. His work has changed. He's doing something different and it's deliberate. And this shows the fact that he's a creative who struggles with finding things that he likes or dislikes, or at least he's a little bit more like you and me. He's just really good at it. It's hard to sum up Pete, but he's a likable, friendly, very generous dude who everybody thinks is cool because he is. And it's really cool that he shouted me out. And that's something that I hope you take away. You can look at your own work and go, man, what would happen if he shouted me out? And I have a feeling that a lot of you would be like, eek, ooh, I don't really like what I've been doing. I haven't really been on a clear path. It's about giving back. And that's the lesson that I actually got from Pete. Clarity to see, wow, he gives back all the time. He's always bouncing the ball into somebody else's court and hoping that they hit it back and hit it out of the park, whatever, because now I know how to do it because I saw it led by example. Looking back, I didn't realize how much he did it. So I'll be giving back a lot more just as a creative because this kind of way of living is the righteous kind. And it's like, nobody's gonna deny a giver into heaven, right? So there's this quote by Winston Churchill, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. And I hope that this video gives you a cool insight into a cool dude who gives back to a lot of people in the community and also makes you wake up and say, hey, crap, I have to get my own stuff together. What if he shouted me out? Am I ready for that? So I hope you like this video. Until next time, cheers.